The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hey, good morning. Oh, hi, Allison. What's up? Well, I just came in here to wish you a very happy Earth Day. So it's Earth Day, huh? Yeah. Oh. You know, that reminds me. Remember that Captain Planet show that was on like 20 years ago? Yeah, I remember that show. Yeah. What if I could become a superhero? Oh, whatever am I to do, my laser printer is kaput. I hear a call for help. This sounds like a job for Earthman! Suppose I just have to throw it in the trash. Shut up! Earthman! I was kind of hoping they'd send Thor. Why throw that printer away when you can give it to me? I shall recycle it into something magnificent, sparkling, and new. All right. You've done the right thing, dear. Thanks, Earthman. Ben? Hey, you know what? I have an idea. You know what we should do is we should take an old laser printer and see how many parts we can salvage out of it. And then we could use those parts in future episodes and then recycle the plastic bits. That sounds like an excellent Earth Day project. Let's do this thing. Earth. Wind. Fire. Water. Heart. Recycling. recycling. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. All right, let's take a look. Now, this is quite the beefy printer. Well, this was actually donated by uh, local tech college, MATC, Madison Area Technical College. Uh, let's see if we can get the Oh, there's instructions here on how to do this. All right. Oh, this thing has like multiple paper trays. That's pretty fancy. Oh, there's some sort of accessory port there. Okay. All right. How do we get this out? Don't, don't want the toner cartridge in there. Okay. Paper! Ha 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 score! I'm gonna put this in my laser printer. It's a circle of life. And a jammed sheet of paper. Okay, let's see. You know what I wish you could do is I wish you could take this ABS and grind it up, you know, and make pellets like for 3D printing, that would be cool. I know people have worked out in that, but there's an award. What the heck is this? I kind of like this screen here. Uh, there's a decent chance that might be Hitachi 44780. That could definitely be reused. Oh, hello. Oh, I can see the laser. There's a tab, okay. Close enough. I'm gonna set this aside for a second. Let's see what we've got on this guy here. Uh, Let's go back to the main printer. <clears throat> hmm. This box with all the warning labels on it is going to be the laser. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right. Remove that guy. Okay. So what happens is, um, the laser hits the spinning mirror 
and then it goes through some prisms and whatnot, and then the beam comes out here. That's why I have this, this opening for it. So that's actually how it makes the image. It's a spinning image, so it goes back and forth. It rasters it. And uh, this guy here, I don't know, there's probably gonna be a motor controller in here, which is probably what this guy is. So we'll take this apart a little later as well. Because we're definitely gonna be, gonna be interested in that spinning mirror. This also could be our motor controller. Or it might be for the laser. I guess we can look up what the parts do. I see a uh, opto interrupter in here. Uh, we use an opto interrupter on the Persistence of Vision project, so we can always use more of those. One thing nice about taking apart larger electronics, like a like this laser printer, is it's going to use larger components, and larger components are going to be easier for you to reuse in projects. Okay, this goes to, okay. All right. Okay, let's dig into this a little bit more. All right, it's obviously gonna be your power supply and electronics. I told Allison, I'm like, Allison, you should get a laser printer. So I, I, I kind of influenced her. <laughs> yes, that's Allison. In case you didn't know who Allison was. Oh, there's a uh, RAM in this. Interesting. It's probably not very much. Probably like 16 or 32 megabytes. But. riser cart. Oh yeah. See that? It uh, comes off at a right angle. Oh, okay. It looks like uh, one of those is a ROM and then the other two are probably RAM. So only two of those are going to be useful for us. If you go on YouTube, you know like we're on YouTube, but there's actually people that use a bunch of chemicals and they'll take circuit boards and whatnot and remove the gold fingers. It sounds like, uh, oh wait, that was a James Bond movie. Ah, gold finger. You won't get away with it. Anyway, uh, you can actually reclaim the gold plating off of these electronics. It takes a lot of steps, and you know, you might think that's a lot of time and labor to get $30 worth of gold. I always thought it might be fun to go out west and try to find a stream and like see if there's any gold left in it. Because it's like, oh wow, I found some gold on the ground. But it's probably all gone. Now it's time for a tech timeout. Recycling and taking apart printers kind of got me thinking, hmm, printers, 3D printers. This is ABS plastic, the same kind of stuff that we put through our MakerBot replicator. Why couldn't this stuff be ground up, melted, and re-extruded into filament that could go into the 3D printer? There's already efforts underway to grind up ABS pellets, which are normally used for injection molding, and then extrude those into plastic. But yeah, why not grind up this with maybe one of those Blendtec Will It Blend blenders, melt it, and make some filament? I think that'd be a really cool idea. Uh, could be an ongoing project for the show, possibly, kind of recycled plastic, because we take apart a lot of things and we have a lot of old pieces of equipment, uh, even like 30-year-old plastic. Yeah, maybe it wouldn't hold up, but uh, why not give it a shot? This piece of plastic today could be the 3D printed birdhouse of tomorrow. And there's so many things that we 3D print on the show where I don't really care what the color is, so go for it. Because we use it for structure, like the, the foot pedal controllers, for instance, that we made. You know, no one's gonna see those levers. I don't care if they're gray or black or blue. So yeah, I think this would be a really cool thing for people to do. Maybe if we have time, we could try it ourselves. Basically, scrap ABS, grind it, melt it, extrude it, 3D print it. Go! When I'm not solving all of life's problems through the magic of modding, you can find me on element14.com, talking with other industry experts, engineers, and hobbyists about all things electronic. 
With over 200,000 members, Element 14 is one of the largest electronic communities on the web. So come join in on the fun. Stay up to date on the latest engineering topics, from the hottest technologies to the latest design trends, by participating in one of Element 14's exclusive webinars, along with Google Hangouts. Or test your skills in one of Element 14's design challenges, such as wireless power or wearable electronics, to see how you stack up against other members. You'll also be able to enroll in road tests that allow you the opportunity to test the latest electronics for free. For more information about these features and much, much more, visit element14.com today. All right, so we have a right angle connector. Uh, it's probably through hole. Going to a ribbon cable bank. Why, uh, this is weird. Oh, look, Agilent, maker of scopes. Uh, let's see if there's anything useful off this. Not really. Maybe we could reclaim these guys, possibly. What I'm really looking for are like stepper motors and stuff. So we'll see. Oh, here we go. See that guy? That's gonna be a, oh, there we go. See the opto tab, it detects that. We can definitely use that guy. It's gonna take a little bit more work to get out. Yeah, we'll come back to him. Uh, uh, oh, that's your power switch. That's interesting. Oh, hello. Uh, let's take this guy out. Wow, look at that big gear. Look at that, it's huge. Oh, wow. That is so cool. It's got like a kind of a worm gear on the motor. And then we, it looks like we have the motor driver built into this as well. Okay, well, we'll come back to him later as well. Apparently the motor is a him, all right. Oh, there's a, a limit switch. Why didn't I just cut this? Oh well, it's too late now. Got a nice disconnect on it too, see that? Shoot. Okay, definitely gonna wanna keep that guy. So I wanna keep this wiring as long as possible. So instead of like cutting it off right there, I wanna get to the root of it. So we have the maximum amount of wire attached to the plug. That makes it more useful for us. And this is a little solenoid. Uh, I don't think we're quite at the point where we can remove it, but Move this door. Oh, that came off more violently than I expected. Maybe there's more paper in it yet to find. Yeah, probably not. Okay, we've got to remove this to get to the solenoid. There we go. Spring's a little sticky. So you can use that as a clutch of some kind. That's what that guy does. Why am I not using my power drill? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like to feel the screws, you know? And kind of tell what's going on. This shouldn't be rocket science. That's gonna be the fan. Oh, no, that's a temperature sensor. Yeah, I bet that's a thermistor. All right, <laughs> that's gonna need the air compressor. Oh, 
Ugh. Ugh, I have to wait until the smoke clears. Oh, hello. Let's set, oh, this is heavy. Let's set this aside. See this dash line on the uh, circuit board? Secondary primary. This is going to be your uh, you know, mains wall power coming in. And then this other half, the secondary, that's going to be where it takes that and converts it to the voltages the device actually needs. So probably 24 in there, probably 12 and five. Oh, I could use this to pick up things. It's the thing longer. Transformers more than meets the eye. <laughs> Stop laughing, you're making me laugh. It's like I know how to make Allison laugh. I just gotta do something like this. Ooh! <laughs> See? <laughs> Man, this has a lot of fuses and relays on it. All right, I think we could probably remove some of those. Ah, there's a smorgasbord of springs in this thing. Yes! Let's take a look at the heart of the unit, the laser. There we go. Follow the warning stickers. And by that I mean don't read them, but they, they'll tell you where the good stuff is. Like the laser. I want a friggin' printer with a friggin' laser on it. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice big mirror. All right, so laser shoots out here and then it hits this hexagonal mirror. And this guy's spinning at a high rate of speed, which we should be able to control. See, there's a pretty simple plug here. So what we could use this for is, uh, well, there's a laser on it, I guess. <laughs> also, we could use the scanning head to create a laser raster projector. Sometimes they use things called galvanometers, which rotate based off current. But with this, you hit it with a laser beam, and by timing its speed with your laser pulses, you could paint an image. I mean, you'd need a vertical refresh as well. Let's go over the loot we found. Here's the laser assembly. We could possibly put that back together, but the real key is to get the laser out of it. And my favorite, the hexagonal spinning laser mirror. And this basically just has two pins to control it, so that's pretty easy to reuse. I also like this three-phase DC motor that actually drove everything. It has a worm gear attached to it, so that's actually kind of unusual. That might be fun. We have a LCD screen we got out of it. I'm not sure if we can reuse this, but this is the uh, the fuser cartridge, this is actually what binds the toner to the paper. It can be used as a heat source. I found these huge giant springs in the lower paper tray. These are really nice. Actually, there are quite a few springs all over the machine. I already put that into my string bucket. Uh, several transformers, power adapters, uh, relays. What is this? Oh man. Some sort, something in epoxy. Yeah, quite a few capacitors. We got this big, huge guy. 200 volts, 1,000 microhenries, uh, several optos. So we can put those in the opto bin. Uh, this is weird, it's like a electromagnetic gear brake. Uh, yeah, and then we got a couple solenoids as well. 
See these guys? So like something like this, we could pro perhaps use on our future episode uh, automatic dog door opener. Eh, what else? Oh, there's another Opto over here. Yeah, there's a lot of Optos in this thing. Uh, it seems like there was another solenoid that I found. Where'd that go? Um, well, it's here someplace. Yeah, so uh, hopefully we can reuse these parts in future projects. The rest of the pieces of the printer, we at least separate it so we have plastic and metal so I can just put those in the recycling bin instead of like just a big junky printer. Who knows where it'll go? That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be building an automatic dog door that opens up when your pooch gets near. That'll keep out skinny burglars and raccoons. And we can probably use a few of these mechanical parts to build it. We'll see you then. Just another day's work for our intrepid hero, Earthman. But how long will Earth be safe? Tune in next week to find out. Thanks, Earthman. <laughs> the show has driven us crazy. Mad with insanity. Many crazy. <laughs> I saw them in the, well, I saw the first two. The Who's theater. your favorite Ninja Turtle? Oh, Donatello. I didn't expect that. Well, in the video, because in the video game, he has the stick, so he's got the longest reach. Going to pump you up. Captain Planner, he's magnificent. We're getting three new kitten calendars in the mail. <gasps> yes! I hope they're super cute kittens, very cute kittens, and cute kittens from space. Hey, you can bring me some lunch. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel, join the Element 14 community, follow us on Twitter, and become our friend on Facebook. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.